Hello, this is Philip Seagraves presenting another great episode in the series on managerial sciences. Today we're going to talk about spreadsheet models, decision support systems, and we'll look at a basic profit model, some what if and sensitivity analysis. As always, I want to thank Dr. Satish Nargri Carr for these great slides and fantastic examples. Thanks a lot, Dr. Satish. Our objectives for today are to analyze a business situation and draw an influence diagram. We want to build basic profitability models on a spreadsheet and perform some very simple and basic what if and sensitivity analyses. So we're going to start off this example by working on a break-even analysis. It's a relatively simple one. So we have a hotel owner with 100 rooms. So obviously we'll come to this, but the most number of rooms that Sally can rent in a night is 100. So we have a fixed daily cost of $1,000 for all the various things such as our mortgage and salaries and maintenance. And our variable cost per room is $10 per day. And that includes the additional cost for cleaning the rooms, the little soaps, having somebody go in, the extra, the extra utilities, the extra water that we use, any additional supplies and toilet paper. But we also have a fixed room price of $50 per day. So what is our break-even point? Well, the first thing we're going to do, as we often do in managerial sciences and decision support, is do a diagram, chart things out. What we do in this case is called an influence diagram. So what are the factors that contribute to our profit? And then we'll calculate our break-even point. For the influence diagram, the ultimate measure that we're trying to get to is profit. So we'll break that into the components of revenue and cost. And the process for building one of these will often be a brainstorming session with you and people on your team and staff thinking of all the different possible ways for determining what profits are, what the different elements are. So we, in this situation, we obviously have rev room revenue and costs. In a more complicated model, but we also have, might have revenue from room service, from fees, from different areas of the hotel. We may charge for video services in the room. We may charge for games. We may charge for the mini bar. Could be a lot of other things. But in this very simple example, we have revenue from the uh, price of the room multiplied by the number of rooms rented and then we have the cost side which will be our fixed cost and then our variable cost which again will multiply that by the number of rooms and we get a variable cost per room and for this simple example we're not going to split it out any further so let's take a look at where we go from this and as you notice down there there are a, a couple of different things such as how the number of rooms uh, rented is different from the rest of the inputs and there's dependencies on both sides of the equation for that one and we also have possibly a demand function which we'll talk about a little bit later which would apply here too. So how do we figure out what the break-even is in a scenario like this? Well we can certainly do a, a simple table like this that calculates calculates it all out and we would have our price of our room and our fixed cost and our variable cost and we could just do a simple a simple table where we take the number of rooms that could potentially be rented. Now obviously that's going to maximum uh, at 100 because I only have 100 rooms to rent. Our revenue, which would be our rooms rented times the price. Our fixed cost is going to be a flat $1,000 and then our variable cost, which would be our $10 per room per night. So we get our total cost. We subtract that from our revenue and we get our profit. And we can see in this simple table we end up with zero profit, which is the break-even point, at 25 rooms. So if we're running at anything more than 25 rooms, we're making a profit. Well, let's take a look at that in Excel really quick, and we'll take we'll also look at the mathematical way to solve, solve this problem. We have a the same table that we did earlier, and we also have a chart which shows us that break-even point. And I've set this spreadsheet up so that we can change the price. If we want to change the price to 55, we would see that our revenue is going to cross over at a different point. And instead of 25, we only have to rent out 22 rooms. If we drop that down to 45, we can see that the break-even point is actually higher. It's now 29 rooms. And I've used a, a text function here in Excel or a formula to build that calculation into that sentence. So let's pull that out and just see how we've done that. I'm going to simply copy this function right here. 
and we'll just paste that one out here separately with our handy dandy equal sign and we have a value here that's calculated precisely at 28.57 and that gets rounded to 29 I changed the formula just to make it round and if we go back to our original value of 50 it goes back to 25 so what have I done here I've simply taken our fixed cost of 1000 and divided that by our contribution margin which is our revenue per room minus our variable cost per room so every room we rent is going to add forty dollars of variable of, of contribution margin to help cover our overhead so in this one when we have a fixed cost of a thousand price of fifty and variable cost it's going to simply calculate to twenty five well, let's go back to our presentation. And we've already taken a look at the chart for break-even analysis. So let's jump on down to another concept called crossover point. Now we have an option of improving our hotel. We can subcontract out some of the services and have a much higher quality and surroundings, but that's going to increase our fixed cost to $1,800, but no change in variable cost. But now that we've got a nicer place, we can charge $70 per room per day. Well, at what point are we going to be indifferent to our current mode of operation and the new option? So how many rooms do we have to rent before we really don't care either way? We're going to have the same profit either way, and that will be called the crossover point. So again, we can do a pretty straightforward table. We have the first case where our fixed costs were 1000 and we've outlined that one here. And we have our fixed cost of 1800 and we've outlined that one here. And as you can see, there's a point at 40 rooms where our profit is going to be exactly 600 in both, both scenarios. But pardon me for that. So we'll have 600 profit at 40 rooms. Anything over 40 rooms, which option are we gonna want? We're gonna want the option where we have the higher fixed costs and the higher uh, room price. Anything below 40 rooms, we're going to want to go with the other option because our profit will actually be higher in that scenario. Actually, our loss may be less depending on how many rooms that we rent. Well, there's also a formula again, which will just tell us this number 600 as well as the value of the number of rooms, 40. Well, let's take a look at that in Excel really quick. And we have our crossover tab here. So this is another scenario where we have the, the same layout and we have a graph showing us that our crossover point is right there at 40 rooms. And we have the formula. I've also built this again into this form into this sentence here. So let's pull this thing out here and decipher what I have done here. Let's copy that formula. And go ahead and place that in another part of the spreadsheet. Again, we need our equals. It's going to add our parentheses where we've missed one. And what we do now is we simply take our the difference between our fixed costs. So we have our two fixed costs here, case one minus case two. Don't worry that it's negative in that, in that situation because we'll do this work the same way for both. And then we're going to do the same thing we did before. We're going to take the difference between our contribution margin. So we have up here our price over here, our contribution margin for case one, and we've subtracted the contribution margin for case two, which is we talked about earlier, so our price minus our variable cost for the first case, and our price minus the variable cost for the second case. And then it simply gives us the answer. It tells us what that crossover point is. Now if we want to understand what that uh, the number of units is, I'm sorry, what the profit is for that crossover point, we simply need to take either one of the cases and multiply this number of rooms times our contribution margin, which would be our 50 minus our 10, or 40, and then we would subtract our fixed cost. And what we've done, I've done that down here in this sentence. So without pulling it out like I did before, I've taken the value of this first formula, which calculates out to that 40, and then I've multiplied that by our contribution margin, 
and I've subtracted our fixed cost. Our B5 is our fixed cost for this option. So I've taken my price minus my variable cost, multiplied that by the original 40, and then we've just subtracted the $1,000. And that gave us the 600. Now I could have used these values over here and it would have given me the exact same 600 answer. All right, well, let's go back to our presentation and move on to our next topic.